I'd like to call the meeting to order for the Chetwin, uh, the District of Chetwin. Can I have the opening statement read, please? As we gather today on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chetwin, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interest. Thank you. Thank you. Prior to adoption of the agenda, we have some new business. New business to uh, add. Uh, the first item would be under D <coughs> I2. And <clears throat> email from the business of law and in, law in, uh, business and law institution dated February 20, 20, uh, 20, February 22nd, 2023. The impact of UNDRIP on resource development project session. And under, under the bylaws D3, District of Chetwin 2023-2027 Financial Plan Bylaw Number 1160 uh, 2023 for first and second and third readings. And, it and new item. <clears throat> And new item, <coughs> bylaw, the District of Chetland. I guess I should just read this. Uh, District of Chetland 2023 tax rate bylaw number 1161 2023 for first and second and third reading. Is there any other new items, Council, to be added to the agenda? Not hearing any. Adoption of the agenda. Motion to adopt. Second. Okay. Councilor Deck. Seconds. All those in favor? Carried. Minutes of the regular council meeting held on March 20th, 2023. Any errors or omissions? Not seeing any. All those in favor? Carried. No delegations. Bylaws. Dis District of Chapman responsibility responsibility bylaw number one one five eight twenty twenty three requires adoption. Second? Second. Councilor Basandowski, second. Any discussion? Uh, Your Worship, was it, was it bylaw number 1158 or 1150? 1158, District of Chetland Animal Responsibility Bylaw 1158. No. 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 1150. We're looking on the wrong agenda. Oh, am I? Okay. Which one do I have? Oh, uh, oh that was the last one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Here I am going in the city. It'll be 1150. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. I will uh, just uh, get into the new agenda that I. We could have done it all over again, just like deja vu, eh?
Okay, here we go. Thanks. Thanks for your patience. I will continue with 1150. Thank you, Council. Okay, uh, any discussion? Not seeing any. All in favor? Carried. Okay, B2, District of Chapman Community Growth uh, Reserve Fund established bylaw number 1159 requires adoption. Motion to adopt. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. New items. District uh, B3, District of Chetland 2023-2027 Financial Plan Bylaw number 1160 uh, for first and second and third reading. Motion for first, second, third reading and adoption. Second. Not adoption, just oh. for second, third reading. Excuse me, just for first, second, and third reading. Good? Yes. And Councilor McDonald, good? Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. B4, District of Chetland 2023 tax rate bylaw number 1161 2023 for first, second, and third reading. Motion for first, second, and third reading adoption. No, no the adoption is for second and third. Or first, second, and third. Yeah. yeah. Second. Okay. Bazadowski seconds. Council Bazadowski. Any discussion on it? All those in favor? Carry. <coughs> we'll move on to. Committee reports and liaison. Committee reports and liaison. Any reports? Go ahead, Councillor uh, Deck. We've got a couple. Um, we had the Chapman Communication Society held their AGM on March 31st. Currently, Bingo is the biggest financial com contributor to the station. Continued diversification is being worked on. Uh, originally, we we're a training station, and now uh, we tend to re retain staff quite a bit longer. We uh, lost two, two employees here over the last little while, which is everybody is aware of, Don Pinkston, Pinkston and Chris Rakowski. Uh, Chris was all, always a familiar face around here at our meetings and around town, and Don was the accountant uh, over the past several years. Uh, we have some new board members, Rochelle Galbraith and Larry Lynch. Uh, that's the... Uh, Communication Society report, uh, Volunteer Fire Department. As per our meeting with the Chetman Volunteer Fire Department Association President, the association has uh, decided to disband and uh, there has been several long-term uh, volunteers who that have decided to retire. Recruiting is going on. Uh, the department needs more volunteers. Uh, if anybody knows anybody that's interested, and also, uh, I'll do a quick summary on the BC Housing Summit that I attended in Vancouver. Uh, although the majority of the confer conference brought up extremely good ideas, uh, streamlining immigration for credential tra credential trades people, uh, more funding for low income housing, interest rates, inflation, fast tracking permit permitting processes, it seemed that the majority of the issues would be in the hands of senior governments. Uh, I think the points we could take away for Chetland and other rural small towns would be uh, we are very nimble as opposed to the larger communities in, in uh, promoting development uh, where they have where we have a couple of weeks or shorter for uh, building permits they're they're in the six eight month year year and a half two year type of program um, 
we have to make sure our regulations make sense uh, and have a robust communication on all projects uh, and prioritize critical projects. Uh, Councilor, Councilor Bazadelski pretty much summed, it up, summed this up in our last budget meeting, pointing, pointing out that we need to prioritize infrastructure. <coughs> uh, the prov provincial government has permitted uh, the building of multifamily units, three and four plexes on single lots, as well as we may wish to look at, at our minimum size home bylaw. I think we're at a thousand square feet or something like that. And we, brought this up a couple of years back and we, we should review that. Um, our staff is innovative and uh, should continue to be innovative in dealing with uh, our customers and getting to yes as opposed to putting roadblocks in. Um, staff should be readily available. Legislation is apparently on its way for short-term rental, rentals uh, as we are we're all aware the housing situation is very dynamic. There is not, not an easy solution. And there does not be any, does not appear to be any political payback for solutions. Also, I'd like to thank Lenora for setting everything up for the trip down there. That's it. Thank you. Any other reports? Councilor McDonald? I <clears throat> sat in the Chetwin International Chainsaw Carving Championship <coughs> Society meeting and um, they are plugging away swimmingly. They are doing a great job getting it all set up for a uh, short like six weeks away. Um, the carvers are confirmed and their information packages have been sent out. They have requested the bios from the carvers um, but they found that it's rather challenging to get them back from them so they're sometimes getting them uh, still like the day before the championship. So. Uh, they're still working on that. Uh, the society is very nervous over the construction site of the new library. Uh, they mentioned meeting with staff from the district and the project lead was Celtic, and there is some conflicting information. Celtic said that during that particular weekend, they plan to be digging for power and gas and prepping and paving uh, where the vendors park, making uh, less space for the uh, vendors and uh, the carving uh, competition. <coughs> This too will make uh, parking a huge concern and access challenging. So they're hoping to get maybe a little bit of clarity on exactly what will be going down at that, at that particular moment um, and seeing if we can maybe get some of the fences back so that it access, like the access to the property is a little bit easier for them. The society, the society is happy that the district is removing fences <coughs> allowing for an extra 20 to 30 feet of space uh, closer to the houses as well as um, additional lighting for around, so they thank for that. Uh, the society is gracious, gracious for the recent deposit from the district of the requested $40,000. Wood would, uh, will be delivered mid-May, um, and they're, uh, they're waiting to ship it out so that they get some of the larger pieces um, from them, um, but they won't know until the wood is delivered. Uh, there will, there's four food vendors confirmed. Uh, security will be the Shriners and, and uh, in partnership with the Masons for cleanup. Uh, advertisements for the event will start in May with the radio announcements, community, uh, community sign board, and a possible sign board in Dawson Creek as well. The society is still actively fundraising for the event. They recently raised $750 from the trade show. Score kept uh, over a weekend for a hockey tournament. Um, they will be doing a 50-50 at the event and raffles as well. They will also, uh, they were also successful in their festivals grant for 11,500. Uh, there is the possibility of a sound stage for the event, which will make uh, it, it really nice for the quick car competition, um, as I think sound was a problem last year. Uh, all major pieces for this event are in place um, and they'll be having two meetings in May. Thank you. Any other reports? Good, Councillor Nelson. Okay, so the BC Hydro Go Fund approved nine regional projects, one of which will directly affect Chetwin. Uh, Chetwin Arts Council received close to 10,000 to buy everything for uh, creating ceramics, including the kiln, and the Chetwin Arts Council will be offering um, the ceramics making for free to our community members in the coming months. NVIT Northeastern RAC approved uh, quite a few large grants for our area. 
Uh, some, some are affecting Chet with it. I'm not sure if the announcement is official, but I'll just say that uh, funds are coming our way, so that's excellent. Uh, I was at the Local Government Leadership Academy conference in March uh, with Councillor Bork and Mayor Coutre. It was a wonderful training and informational session, and I would uh, suggest that it's a great networking opportunity and that any of my colleagues that would like to go or have the opportunity to go next year should definitely attend. Um, our NCLGA organizing committee traveled to Dawson Creek in March as we are uh, co-hosts between Chetland and Dawson Creek and uh, Councillor Rourke, uh, Ellen and myself, we went and we are well on our way to creating a really exciting conference. Looking forward to seeing everybody there in May. Uh, uh, it's for the library board. Construction is well underway. I'm sure everybody has seen. And uh, we're on the way to looking at purchasing furniture. And anticipation completion is fall 2023. And to finalize, myself and Mayor Coutre will be heading to Vancouver on Sunday for the First Nations Major Project Coalition Conference, and I look forward to reporting on that. Thank you. Uh, just for clarity of information, uh, Ellen, in the last name we have somebody wants to contact, is it Ellen McAvaney? Right, correct? No, we go it's Ellen McAvaney. Okay, yes. thank you. Any questions for reports? I would just add that uh, as well um, a recipient for the GoFund, BC Hydro GoFund was also Chapman Meals on Meals Society. Oh, oh. Mm. So uh, that you know greatly benefits our local <laughs> seniors. And I cannot believe I forgot that. <laughs> and congratulations to Meals on Meals. What a great organization. Okay, thank you. Uh, the mayor's report. Uh, uh, mayor attended a Kofi conference at uh, the Council of Forest Industries on April 12th, uh, 13th, and 14th. The Minister of Forest, uh, Bruce Ralston, was in attendance and uh, discussed a little bit about red tape, about permitting, and what's going on in the industry right now. Uh, so red tape being one of them, just, just uh, a little bit of what uh, is uh, affecting uh, the forest industry right now. Uh, I had an opportunity to speak with him, the minister. I made it clear to the minister how devastating the closure of any sawmill in our community and the effects of such a closure on, <clears throat> on the economy and the mental toll on the community. I talked with the minister about existing, uh, the existing West Fraser mill and the possibility of a fiber shortage occurring on this site. Mr. Ralston is now looking into the shortage and, and his thoughts was that, uh, that camper closure would help the West Fraser uh, sawmill to survive in Chetland. I asked him if the shortage was because of permitting and one of the assistant deputy ministers said that they were getting close to some type of, of agreement I don't know who it was with that he did not elaborate. So these are the things going on outside our community at, with the provincial government and other entities. So <clears throat> it kind of leaves us in a position where the unknown. Uh, also had an opportunity to speak uh, with the CEO of uh, West Fraser, uh, Ray Ferris. Uh, Ray had concerns about the future of fiber in the Chetwin area and other areas in BC. I also met with uh, Stephen Mackey, Camper Executive uh, Vice President of Northern Operations. I conveyed my concerns that Camper Operation was do wasn't doing enough to help secure fiber for the existing West Fraser sawmill, and he reassured me that Camper and West Fraser were talking and the camper was in a position to help. Uh, without uh, participating in these uh, conferences, we do not get to have an audience with uh, high uh, profile executives who attend these uh, conferences, i.e. Uh, Minister of Forest, uh, Bruce Ralston. As for the conference itself, it was very informative and, and every session had a component of land use and land entitlement with our uh, First Nations. 
So with that, it was uh, every, every operation that was uh, talked about right from CN, mining, oil and gas, forestry, farming, shipping, terminals, and the tourism uh, all had the same ask of them, the collaboration and consulting with the First Nations. Uh, we are in a pseudo, we are in a position right now today to have ourselves with good opportunities that bring the community like ours to a point of great importance. We are in suitable location on a major highway, Highway 97, and this bringing opportunities that may arise from being on a major corridor. We, will, we should be preparing for the next level of opportunities with our First Nations and with our provincial government and federal government. So all these things are outside the boundaries of Chetwin. All we do is advocate for what we do inside the council chambers and inside Chetwin. And that's that. Any questions on the reports? If not, I need adoption uh, for to receive the reports. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. Councilor Bazanowski. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Seven discussion, discussion items, items P1, P1 letter from letter the Honorable, Honorable Ber uh, Mike, uh, Mike Bernier, Bernier MLA, MLA Peace, Peace River South. South. I make, I make the recommendation that council provide a letter of support to Honorable Mike Bernier, MLA Peace River South in the request to create a division of practice in the South Peace. Sir. Discussion? Go ahead, Councillor McDonald. I'd be curious to know why the College of Physicians and Ministry of Health have yet to group this request after so long. Like, is it just falling off the side of their desk, or is there a reason behind them not wanting a division? CAO, uh, staff? We're not sure. They aren't responding to requests for information on this, um, so we don't really know why. Um, in support of it, I think it would be wonderful. Um, it would be nice to know what their reservations are, though. I can continue to look into it a little bit more. I can ask. I can ask uh, Minister uh, Bernier as well. I mean, if you struggled in the past, that's fine too. I'm, and again, like I said, I'm in support of it. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely keep it in mind, and when I hear more information, I'll, I'll for sure share with Council. I appreciate that. Uh, very, uh, serious very serious questions, questions that, that uh, uh, McDonald, McDonald, Council McDonald has asked, so uh, uh, it'd be important that we know and uh, the public know uh, uh, what, what uh, kind, kind of support, support why we're getting, we have, we to, have give to give this kind of support, support when we when all, as British Columbians, the health, health is uh, quite, uh, quite uh, in, in, in a predicament where we should be sending letters of support when it should be at our services. Thank you for that question. Any, Any more discussion, discussion on this matter? Seeing none, none, all those in favor? favor? Better, Better support. support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, carry. carry. Correspondence. Correspondence. Now, information items. Information items. Your Worship. Oh. Oh, we did the. Uh, Okay. Yeah, do you want <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Kevin. 
we are going to we are going to just circle back a little bit and uh, do discussion item uh, the new uh, new item that was uh, put forward at the adoption of the agenda. It was email from the Pacific Business and Law Institute dated February 22nd, 2023. The impact of UNDRIP on resource development project. We need I'd, like to, I'd like to motion that council authorize Mayor Coutre to attend the impact of UNDRIP on resource development project session on April 27th, 2023 in Vancouver, BC. Any discussion on that? Go with Councilor oh. McDonald. Sorry, no, no. Um, What was the reason behind the decision to attend in person? I see that there was a live webinar as well. Um, was there more um, available through like the in-person conference part? I will be attending the conference, uh, the major project uh, coalition project, and I will be in Vancouver. So it uh, just going to take two more stays or nights and then I should, we'll be in person. In person is always a valuable context to what we do. If uh, there's a person in front of them talking to them, it's more likely that we get a result. So that that's the reasoning behind that. I will be there anyway, so we're just we're moving a, a couple of dates forward. Councillor uh, Nelson. I was just going to reiterate exactly what you said for the most part, but I think it's an excellent marriage for the uh, the conference that we will be attending, and it'll be some education to add on to that. Councillor Nelson, uh, Councillor McDonald, is that yeah. okay. Any more discussion on this? All those in favor? Okay. Thanks, Seattle. Uh, being on top of things. Okay, down to nine information items. Anything to be pulled? Motion to receive I-1 to I-10. Second. All those in favor? Carry. Reports for action. Nicholson Road sidewalk contract awarded. I'll make the recommendation that council award the Nicholson Road sidewalk contract to Parallel Projects Inc. at the bid price of one hundred and eighty-eight thousand nine hundred sixty-eight SGST. Second. Okay. Second discussion on the matter. Uh, okay. Councillor. Um, yeah. I was just wondering: is are there other projects that they've already done um, for us? Uh, yeah, they did the trail in front of the rec center. Um, they are also doing the earthworks and road prep for Wabi Crossing. Thank you. Councilor Deck? So that was pretty much the same question. Thank you. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Not hearing any. All those in favor? Carried. RA2. RA2. Revitalization tax exemption. I'll make the recommendation that council approve the application from VJ Paul Land Holdings, Chapman Limited, for the revitalization tax exemption and authorize the mayor and corporate officers to enter into agreement as per the district of Chapman bylaw number 977 from Second. Council Nelson, second. Any discussion? <coughs> Oh, well, can you go. can start okay. okay. Councillor uh, Work. Thank you. Um, have we done this before? And, um, they, or is this a new tax exemption? See, um, the last one of these was the West Fraser Bioenergy Plant. The one before that was the Canfor Pellet Plant. Those were the, the only two that I can think of in the last 12 years. And they were approved? Yes. Um, what are they planning to revitalize for the, for the property? This takes us from the 
bare land that it was to the facility that is on that that chunk of land now, the the Subway Domino's and Edo restaurant. So that's the revitalization is going from the raw land <coughs> to the full building. So the tax exemption is sorry. The, so the tax exemption has there been past revitalization and they're getting the exemption moving forward for the next three years. Yeah, they would get the exemptions for 2024, 25, and 26. Good. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Councillor McDonald. Any other uh, questions? Okay, Councillor Nelson. I just have a comment. I think that the, the new build was a beautiful facelift for that area of town, and they clearly sunk quite a few dollars into the development, and it looks great, and I fully support the tax exemption. Any other? Uh, CAO? Just for a bit more background, <clears throat> because I see a few eyebrows raised, it, it, was, it was designed as something to promote business in Chevron. And it, it, any any business that has more than a million dollars of assessed value improvement is is entitled to the to this exemption under the bylaw. So that's why there hasn't been a lot of them. We haven't had a lot of million dollar projects uh, that that saw that kind of marked improvement. And but that's why council back in 2012 approved of of the idea. It's to promote business and to hopefully uh, you know kind of recruit business to come to town. With Councilor Rathbun. And sorry, I can't find it, but was it a three year exemption? Is that what it is? Yes, yes, yes it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, it's fifty percent, then twenty five percent, then ten percent, am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Good Councillor Walk? Yes, thank you. Okay. All any more discussion? We're good. All those in favor? Okay, carried. RA3, Nor Northern Housing Initiative Program Grant Application uh, Development Permit. I'd like to make a motion that helps authorize the Northern Housing Initiative Program Grant Application for Northern Properties Apartment Limited, address 511546 AV Northwest, Chetwin, BC, included as attachment A to this report to authorize the mayor and corporate officer to execute a partnering agreement with Northern Properties Apartments Limited address 5115 46th Ave, Northwest Chetwin, BC, and approve the issuance of development permit number 01-2023 to Northern Properties Apartments Limited for construction of six story, 127 unit apartment building with single underground parkade 511546 Ave Northwest, also known as Lot A, District Lot 398, PRD 23543, except Plan 26099, included as Attachment C to this report. Second. Councillor Deck, second. Discussion on the matter? Go ahead, Councillor. Um, and there, there's um, geared to income apartments in here is that what it said or, or low not low income but uh, yes sure. it's it's there's a, a range of, of, of properties available we're very fortunate that the proponents of the project are here mm -hmm. to answer any questions from council that they might have um, if Giuseppe would you want to speak yeah, sure yeah Giuseppe is, <laughs> is 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 the driver and he's brought his family with him and, and uh, um, He's the one kind of, he's, he's the mastermind behind the plan. Uh, it, it was in the, in the notes anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, I was just so there, there is that. a range of, of, of rentals available. Um, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities. There's furnished, there's non-furnished, there's underground parking. Uh, the new zone, zoning bylaw that council's just uh, approved one of the changes is, is, is that we raised the height by, by uh, I think, 10 feet roughly so that to accommodate this building. Um, and it's, it's the largest housing project for a very long time in, in Chetland, if not forever. It's, I believe, a $25 million project all told, Giuseppe? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor. 
Um, yeah. And the other question, I have one more question, and it, it's in regards to our, um, our fire department can only access four stories at this point. And what would the, uh, would there be consequences to that? Well, right now it conforms to all the fire code. So <clears throat> the building is constructed in such a way to minimize that. There's, there's, it's sprinkled and that kind of thing. It, there is, you know, our, our equipment's not really built for a apartment building that size, but as we move forward, we're looking at, at, at upgrading equipment as, as part of the natural process. Um, but it, it, it does conform to the fire code, so it's not an overwhelming concern at this point in time. We covered a lot of things, uh, the water flow, the capability of the water, um, you know, access for emergency vehicles around the building, and, and the proponents have been very, very open and helpful about accommodating all of our needs on it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I just had a question about the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure, since it's really not anywhere close to either highway. <laughs> Why is this necessary? <laughs> It's within 800 meters, so they, they decided to involve themselves. So we were a little less than happy with that as well. Is that to Highway 29? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, 29. Oh, 29 sorry. North. Or, or sorry, 97? Or 29? 97 North. Oh, okay. yeah. it says 97 yeah. North. Oh, it says 97 North in the letter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's super. Councilor Bazandesky? Oh, yeah, that's that's the storm drainage one, actually. That's storm drainage can't be directed towards 97, but we're within 800 meters of 29. Do we know offhand what this is going to do to our rental inventory uh, in terms of percentage? Is it going to raise it up by 25% or do we know? Um, we're just formalizing the rest of the rentals <clears throat> that are available in our empty areas in town but right now currently we're still extremely full so i'll have to do another re-inventory to give you a percentage of what we'll add but it's 127 new units right what's our current inventory not that if they're full or empty do we have any idea i'm gonna guess it's over 400 for sure so this is almost a 25 percent increase yeah, then i would say you're very close to your percentage okay. good councilor nelson I don't think it's any secret that uh, Chetwin's been struggling with accommodating a lot of the business professionals that we want to acquire and retain. And I think this is a brilliant solution to, to bring these people to our community, uh, provide them with a new apartment. And I couldn't be more grateful for new development. And I think it's a brilliant project. And on that note, I was contacted by Northern Health. I had a meeting with the local administrators there, and, and they asked me to forward to them any information on new developments like this because they would be interested in anchoring down a block for, for healthcare professionals like nurses, uh, imaging, diagnostic imaging technicians, and so on and so forth. So their interest is already really high, and it's just at the rumor base. Uh, so uh, we're now at a point where we can acknowledge that there's a project, you know, publicly, and and uh, I think it's going to be overwhelming the response. Okay. Any other uh, discussion on? It? Not seeing any. All those in favor? Carried. Okay. Reports and information none. I didn't see any new business as as presented. Public questions. This is an opportunity for the public to ask questions for what we went through on the agenda. Giuseppe, if you've got any questions of the council, it's an opportunity for you yourself or any other out there that we're good? No, we're good. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Adjournment. So moved. Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you.
Today I wanted to take you on this walk that meant so much to me every day. This walk used to represent everything that I loved out of my life. My education, my accomplishments, my dreams, my colleagues that I loved in the medical practice. As I do this walk today, I'm reminded of all of the emergency visits I've had over the last 15 months. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> As I do this walk today, I'm reminded of the countless hours I have spent trying to find support from my government. But I don't even think I can get into the original neurologist again for months. And I'm, I'm gonna lose my house, like, My name is Jamie Killen. I have known Kristen for about 20 years. We met when I first moved to town. In this little shoddy restaurant and she just had this like gigantically fun smile on her face and she was just like, hi, I'm Kristen. And I knew immediately that I loved her. Hi. Hi. Hello. Do not <laughs> put that in the video. <laughs> I think she looks great. I'm videotaping. <laughs> okay, here we go. As a healthcare practitioner, we were offered the shot right away. So it was like doctors, nurses, and then the rest of us. Our clinic signed up immediately. I think that's one of the hardest parts for Kristen, uh, is that she was one of the first people to go out and get this vaccine. From the day that I left the hospital, like every day I just got worse. They had me on heavy doses of prednisone and sleeping pills by that time, and I was just getting worse every single day. So we reached out to multiple media stations, radio stations, newspapers, nobody got back to us. Any mainstream media, we reached out to everyone and nobody would take our story. This documentary is absolutely not about what's right or wrong. It is only about allowing a place for these stories to be heard so that people in the public can see that there are people that have been left behind by this. They're human beings. This could be your mom, your dad, your brother, your kid. And it wouldn't feel fair if it was one of them. I wonder if I'm ever gonna get better and I miss the life that I had. That shot took it away from me. It was 25 minutes after I got it. 
and I've never been the same. Hi, my name is Amanda Tricker and I'm the Children's Program Coordinator at the Chetwin Public Library. And I'm Michelle Fontaine. I am the Youth Program Coordinator over here at the Public Library. We work together um, on the programming. Uh, Michelle does the after school care and I'm the zero to five and we try and work as closely as we can to make uh, our efforts in the community to bring people together and we host a lot of different events here at the Chetwin Library. Um, we, um, we're working on a Easter one right now, a family fun night. We had Flashlight Fridays in February, which went crazy good. Um, we, we just had our registration for a new program starting April 3rd and they filled up so fast which we are working on getting hopefully maybe some more in the works because um, we want everybody in the community to come together and be able to be a part of it. Yeah. And we want to be able to serve everybody of all ages so having that opportunity to, co to connect with um, all kinds of you know kids from all around town not just one specific school but from every um, you know area in town is really important to us and kids then can meet new friends which is wonderful people that they wouldn't have met you know beforehand which is great as well so me as the children's program coordinator um, we bring a lot of moms into the groups and we all connect <clears throat> as moms and especially with the way things have been going moms get to come in and connect with other moms and they get to see and enjoy each other and talk about like being a new mom or having other kids and our struggles and things like that. And I also have a lot of play date groups which are zero to five. So people with uh, younger kids and older kids can come in and we can kind of amalgamate together and everybody can come in and enjoy, do crafts and lots of sensory stuff. So as the youth program coordinator, my main focus is school age children from kindergarten to grade seven. So we do have a wide variety of programs that do, that do cater to different interests of different age groups. So Monday and Tuesday, we do have the, I have the younger ones who are kindergarten to grade three. And then Wednesday and Friday are my older children. So they're grade four to grade seven. So there is a big, um, you know, spectrum of what we do. Um, so Monday and Tuesday are mostly just a fun time. We do a lot of activities and we do a lot of um, playtime and games and things like that. Wednesday is more uh, science-based. This, this session we're going with more science-based, science experiments for the older kids. Um, Thursday is um, crazy creations in which we are building and creating, you know, using our imaginations really. It's, it's a really, you know, free-floating kind of program. We're, trying something new this time around and Friday is our cooking class which is geared towards the older kids who have more skills in the kitchen and are more guidable than the little guys so that's pretty exciting we're really looking forward to that. So as far as the Monday, Tuesday and Thursday program we're already totally full almost completely in those ones because the younger ones uh, they love coming out to play, but maybe people don't realize that we do have a lot of spaces left in our older classes. So if any of the parents wanted to come down and register their older kids, grade four to grade seven, for the Wednesday or, or Friday program, that would be wonderful too, as we have a lot of spaces available. We, and we'll also have a teen program coming in the works. That's something that our goal is to work on mm -hmm. is inviting the teens in, mm -hmm. and Michelle will be working closely with them to provide all ages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We also have free snacks available mm -hmm. for the programs that run during the day that are my programs and Michelle's after mm -hmm. school and we make sure that they're clean, healthy snacks mm -hmm. um, and they can choose from whatever they want for that. And in my programs I also feed the parents too, mm -hmm. among with the kids. Yeah. So pretty cool. So we have a summer reading program that's coming up. Um, you can, if you don't know how to register, you can call the library or you can come on down and we can walk you through everything and we can also show you at all of our other resources. We have a lot of them. 
um, and we can show you, we have like a pamphlet. You can also go online. We have a Facebook page where you can kind of scroll through and check out all the resources that we have and the times and programming for that. Uh, I want to thank you guys for listening to us today. Um, we hope to see some new families mm -hmm. in the works and some more new people come in and join us. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we hope to see some new families. Mm -hmm. We just thank you so much for endorsing our library. It's great to have all the faces come in and we love meeting new people and seeing the hustle and bustle in here is, is great. <laughs>
beautiful day yesterday and today. As you can see, we have a lot of events going on with the organizers that did this event. Is people from everywhere that came, like Vancouver, Chilliwack, oh gosh, Killer Lake, Alberta, Grand Prairie, a lot of people. And a lot of us are related because we are all did come from Moggison Flats and where I'm standing is where Moggison Flats was. And I just, just behind me here is where we live. And just, like I said, there's a lot of, all the families that lived in Moggison Flats are here attending. And it's, everybody's having fun. It's so great to see everybody I haven't seen for 20 years or so. And thank you to the organizers. Leanne McPeters, Adele Avery, Letha Dowd, and Lynette Desjardins and Ruby Knott. They did a lot of work to, to hold this event. And they did a beautiful job. For, for people that don't know what Mox and Flats was, is, this is where we lived. This is where we squatted 50 years ago. Um, we just lived in shacks. We had no power, no running water, no nothing. We were all pretty poor, but we all survived. I, don't, I myself don't remember ever being hungry because we had hunters and everybody shared. And yes, yeah, so in 1971, they uh, built Wabi Crescent. I guess I started in 1969. I'm going to say it took a couple of years to build the houses in Wabi Crescent and that's where they all moved us to and the houses were not free we had to pay a mortgage and a dollar for the lot so everybody here now is Marks and Flats and Sesame Street so it's great to see.